Recently, the Society for Vascular Surgery decided to put together a video archive interviewing innovators in vascular surgery and, and leaders in vascular surgery, and then more recently decided to interview the uh, international honorary members of uh, the Society for Vascular Surgery. And today we have with us John Rico, a eminent French surgeon uh, who has been um, a member of the SVS for years and is here in San Francisco. Welcome, John. Thank you. Where did you grow up? Well, I grew up in Paris mm -hmm. in, uh, and in the suburbs of, uh, of the city. I do the elementary school there and uh, the university there. And uh, from Paris, I, finally, I, uh, I go to medical school and uh, then to Chicago for a fellowship and come back to Paris and fi finally, uh, and, uh, and I'm still now in Poitiers which is a small university town southwest in France, near Cognac, close to Bordeaux. So that's the whole story. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, were your parents involved in medicine? No, not at all. No? No. How did you decide to select that as a career? Well, I think that I had the passion to do it. Because mm -hmm. uh, I thought it, it was a good job, interesting, and uh, because you take care of, pe of people and uh, you help them, and uh, so it's, uh, you know, the start was a very simple uh, idea. And uh, we, within uh, medicine, I think that uh, surgery appears very quickly as something that was uh, perhaps the best for me. Did you have uh, some mentors in medical school that uh, helped you get into surgery or helped you decide to go into surgery or what experience helped you along? Well, you know, you, when you are a resident you, in, in France, you, um, you choose by yourself where you want to be trained. So in fact, it depends of, uh, um, of the influence of these people. So I think it's very... Uh, it's changing from one people to another. If you if you start with a very good service, you know, cardiac surgery, um, you you will be inclined to do cardiac surgery, perhaps. If you um, start with a, a liver transplantation in a very good service, I mean, you will be inclined to do this. And I I have started, in fact, by making some research. Uh, in uh, the INSERM, INSERM is uh, like the NIH in uh, here, on a liver transplantation. And uh, it, it opens my mind on, um, on the surgical r uh, research. You know, even if I quit this, you know, it's working on animals, making, you know, uh, experimentation and things like this, doing a uh, Portocaval anastomosis in a rat, when you are first, first uh, six month uh, resident, well, was quite interesting. It was uh, something that, uh, you know, show you the way to, to do things, to uh, build a protocol, even if when you are very young, and so the people help you to, to do so and I think it's very interesting to put your mind in the right direction. Did you have, were there uh, surgical mentors uh, that uh, were doing vascular surgery when you were in, in your training? Well, in Paris there, are, there were two schools, uh, Kiefer and uh, at La Pitié Salpêtrière, which is, uh, I think it's still now the largest hospital in Europe, mm -hmm. and uh, Cormier, in Saint Joseph, and I was uh, the chief resident for both of them. They were very different. Kiefer was very uh, modern and uh, a very good surgeon, a technician, mm -hmm. working like a dog, and uh, from you know, very early in the morning to very late in the night. And uh, but on the top of this. 
he felt an interest in uh, writing and uh, and publication. Mm -hmm. And this was for France quite unusual, you know, to have uh, somebody who is doing the cases himself, a real very good technician. And he was known for doing the biggest of cases and doing yeah, them the, very well. Yeah, you know, for record, the mineral aneurysm and uh, the difficult cases. And he has got uh, a lot of patients coming from uh, Algeria, Tunisia, you know, all the border of the Mediterranean Sea at that time. So he has a huge, huge number of patients coming from abroad. So it was interesting for us. Cormier was more classic but with a very good practice, more, more close to a general vascular surgery. Kiefer was more uh, outstanding cases. Mm -hmm. And then after you had finished up uh, years of training and residency in, in surgery, you ended up coming to the United States. Yeah. How did, how did that all get arranged? Well, in fact, I uh, I was interested by um, I was all, you know at the end of my residency I was still uh, reading the the journal. The, it was surgery at that time. The journal of vascular surgery was not existing, and uh, by reading the papers, I find many papers from uh, Dr. Yao and Dr. Bergen. So uh, I say, well, these people are. Very interesting, and uh, I I write an application. I write an application to them, to to San Francisco too, to Wiley, and uh, to another team in uh, Cartier in uh, Montreal. And uh, Wiley answered to me that uh, he has no position available until the year after, you know, it was complicated for me to wait an, one year. And uh, the, the Canadian, they never answer, which was typically French, yeah, <laughs> more or less. And uh, Chicago, he had an answer. It was, not, it was, well, if you want to come, okay, you take care of yourself, and we, and we will see. No promise, but, you know, an offer to come. And I... I receive, I pass, you know, I receive some grants, and I decide to, uh, to to come. And this changed my professional life, because you know, at that time, uh, vascular surgery. When you were a chief resident coming from Kiefer or Cormier in France, you can go in private practice anywhere, in Nice, in uh, Paris, and in very good places, and you can make a very good living. And instead of this, you go to the United States with uh, your luggage, you know. And, um, well, you know, it's make a difference. I was married with two kids. It was, um, your wife has to follow you in this situation. You know. It was not easy. But after, I mean, it was the best period of my life. But perhaps because I was, I was very uh, lucky to find uh, uh, outstanding people not only on a technical uh, value, but on the human side. Mm -hmm. I think this is very important. So you came to Northwestern in yep. Chicago in, uh, in 1982. 82, 82, yeah. And I stay until the end of 83, nearly two years. And then what, during that, uh, that period of time, what were you doing at Northwestern? Well, I was, uh, I had a, clinical uh, responsibility. I was not uh, on call, but uh, I do cases, I help cases, I make rounds with a resident, I go to the laboratory, I work with uh, Bill Pierce, who was uh, a fellow with me. We try to uh, do uh, some database on the, of the patient and uh, to, to publish some papers. And you worked in the operating room? Yep. Yeah. And I remember as a fourth year resident, I, you and I did open aneurysms together yeah. on a regular basis. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. You, you had a, a lot of clinical experience yeah. Yeah. besides the research experience. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But what I, what I learned in the United States was uh, the organization. Mm -hmm. You know, the, you have to publish, you have to 
analyze what you do and uh, how you do it and to try to explain to the people why and what you find, etc. In France, you do it at that time, you know, people do the thing. They, they were very good uh, surgeons, I mean, but they don't take the time to write anything. So it's just a confidential experience, I guess, you know. Well, 1982, that's a great year for our fellowship. You, now you're the president of European SVS, editor of the journal. Uh -huh. Bill Pierce, president of ISCBS. Linda Graham, president of University Surgeon. This is unbelievable. Yeah. Well, Fantastic. Well, well, a bunch of very... What? good people and you were the chief resident. <laughs> you know, that was fun. A lot of talent. <laughs> <laughs> it really is unbelievable. And there was a good uh, atmosphere, you know. Complimentary people that can uh, understand, they were very different, but they can uh, understand each other. And I think this is very important. You know, when you are young, to see that you can uh, cooperate, even if you are opposite, even if it's not always easy. I mean, it's, it's a lesson. Now, I want to ask you, it's about Vietnam. Uh -huh. You have a institute in Ho Chi Minh City. Yep. Tell us a little bit more about what, what this is for, training vascular fellow, training resident, or who, who are the people that you train? Well, who give you the support? Mm. Is this a government mission or a private foundation or tell us a little bit more about it. Okay. I mean it's great that you are helping mm. Mm -hmm. some underdeveloped mm. so-called country to catch up on mm. vascular surgery. Mm. So it all begins by a doctor out of borders in Cambodia after the Red Khmer. You know, the Red Khmer invite Cambodia and kill uh, all a generation of people. And we were, French people, we are very close to, com to Cambodia. So uh, I get there, it was not Vietnam, but you know, the Vietnamese stopped the Red Khmer. It's nobody else. They decide one day that it was enough was enough and that uh, 12 years old people cannot kill a country because it was weather, what was happening. So they, they stop and um, but you know there were bombs e everywhere so the, the kids were amputated mm -hmm. but you know they, they cannot walk, they cannot live so we go there and we, we try to help to put prosthesis. You know it was very basic mm -hmm. but still it was very useful. So we, we get there, and uh, when we've done the job, we leave this to a, a national organization that were much better than we were. And then I go to Vietnam, and in Vietnam it was a different story, but there was no training in vascular surgery, and there were cases. So they were asking for help to train the resident, the chief resident, the fellow, the problem is that there was um, uh, a need. The Vietnamese government was asking for. Uh, the French government agrees to help, but nobody wants to give some money. So what I did was I decided, it begins during one of my holidays, I go there, you know, I pay everything, okay. And I go there in the University Hospital in Oshimin. Oshimin is uh, at that time it was eight million town with no real vascular surgery, not at all. So we try to organize things. And when uh, the first clinic, I mean, you have 120 patients. So this is a big. This was a big problem. And uh, you know they have no social security, they have no coverage, they have to pay for the device, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's a big, big, big problem. We did not receive any support from the industry. No private fund, no industry. Just you know, we try to um, 
to cooperate with a, with a Vietnamese. And from, you know, so it became very, very small, and now it's getting better. We still have no support, no financial support, but we have done a lot of progress. We are doing aneurysm, we are doing carotid surgery. We, the problem now is the endovascular surgery because there is a cost. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, at one time I thought that we could have some support because uh, Jacques Chirac was the president of the French Republic. Uh, by chance, visit the place and, uh, and they discovered what we were doing. And he was very impressed by, uh, you know, we are in the middle of nowhere, in a big hospital, finding French people that were working there. So he didn't know this, and uh, so he was uh, very great, grateful. But after he disappeared, I mean, he changed, and uh, we... But, I mean, there is a, the dean, the, the CEO of the hospital, is in Ho Chi Minh, is willing to do it. The, the president of the university where I work let me go there, mm -hmm. but I, you know, I, I cover all my expenses. But that's, you know, it's one day I hope it will change, but, uh, but it works. Now we have uh, the Vietnamese themselves pay for training. They, we, they bring some of the residents in France for three months, six months. I see. And uh, when well, when they come, I keep them at home because they have not enough money to go in an hotel or to rent anything. So they stay at your, at your house? Yeah, they stay in my house yeah. two or three months and after they go back. They have just the, the, you know, enough to take the, the plane, mm -hmm. the, the train to go to Poitiers, and, uh, and uh, you know, a small amount of money, but it's mm -hmm. not enough. Do they speak French, John? Yep. Yeah, they do. They yep. still have the tradition of speaking French uh, in, in Vietnam. Yes, but now it's changing. Most mm -hmm. of them speak English. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah. 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 So it's the, the people that are 60 uh, speak all French mm -hmm. and very well. Mm -hmm. But the young people speak English. Half, half, and now the new generation is on the English. Oh, I see. Ah. I've got to tell you that, Wall. His son and my son reunited in Vietnam recently when John went to mm -hmm. Vietnam for a trip. They were little kid yeah. together when he was in 80, uh -huh. 82 or 83. Yeah. <laughs> and that yeah. is really Isn't that something? fantastic. Yeah, you know, it is something. John really enjoyed ATN. Yeah. They had a quick, quick time together. Yeah. This is unbelievable. To me, it's just fantastic. They had a good time together, and they haven't seen each other for many years, and then they re reunited. That's fantastic. Did you, uh, you received the Legion of Honor. Uh, mm -hmm. and does it have something to do with the uh, Ho Chi Minh uh, experience, or is it from uh, your medical work? No, it's are? from uh, Cambodia and uh, Ho Chi Minh. Well, one day we were in a rural hospital in Cambodia, in the middle of nowhere. And uh, there was an helicopter that got down, and there was uh, it was Chirac that came, mm -hmm. and uh, because he was he, he wanted to see what the French were doing, and you know when you receive like this the president of your of France, I mean it's something. But he was there were ten people, no more, mm -hmm. and it was very simple. I mean it was very nice. He asked what we were doing, and uh, we we explained to him what we tried to do. And he stay one hour or two, he have a coffee with us, and he say, well, I will remember you, and uh, the, the team, you know, they are nurses. And, and uh, six months later, I received a call. I was in the hospital at 9, 9 p.m., I remember the telephone ring, and the, there was a lady on the other. I said, well, we, we, need some, uh, we need some papers from you because uh, the president, uh, and I, you know, I, I thought it was you know. <laughs> a hoax. <Yeah. laughs> and called back, and so it comes right like this. So yeah. I mean, this is in relation with what we did. Oh yeah. You also went to Beijing. Yep. Visiting uh, Professor Liu. Yeah, in uh, whom I know very well. Yeah. And so uh, he is now in America, uh -huh. visiting Dick Dean. 
Oh, I see. Because his son is going to Wake Forest University. Ah, I see. So he drove his son and I introduced him to Who Dick Dean. Dean. Mm -hmm. And they had dinner together last night. I see. So tell us, w are you going to open an institute in Beijing? No. No. No, no be be Beijing was uh, a sort of, uh, the, the, you know, trying to, uh, it was another level. It was trying to help them to make, to publish their experience, to write papers because they were a little behind. But they, have, they knew that they have money, they have a technique, they have a very good, uh, quite a good uh, organization. So they don't need people to show them how to do things. But they need to, uh, <coughs> to explain how to make, a, how to write a protocol, how to do a prospective study, how to, to be known. And uh, it was interesting. I have seen all the service that were not on this caliber. I mean, it was, uh, sometimes it was uh, difficult, but with the university in, be in, in Beijing, it was very, very nice. So I am still there officially until next year, I think. Mm -hmm. But I go very, I, I go just go once a year. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just a discussion on papers, uh, mm -hmm. trying to change things, words, you know. In September, they're going to open a new hospital. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 2,000 bed. 2,000 bed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have a new vascular wing. Mm -hmm. It's all new technology. Yeah. Pretty amazing. Along the way, you ended up getting a PhD. Well, I was in, uh, in Paris, and we work on uh, biostatistics uh, yeah. and epidemiology, because I thought that that was that this part was missing to you know to write paper to do a propensity analysis or randomized controlled trial you, you need to work with a statistician but you need to understand how it works so I uh, I did uh, two years PhD half time you know but during two years did you do that after you came back from yeah. uh, Chicago mm -hmm. did you? Yeah. That's a good background. It, it helps you uh, with your uh, grant proposals and it helps you yeah, with your Yeah, yeah, with yeah your it papers. was, uh, yeah. and you know, it's something mm -hmm. which is missing in France. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, uh, I think it's very important. It, you know, you, if you have some knowledge about this, uh, you avoid to make some major errors in protocol and things like that. Tell us about the, uh, the French Vascular Society. How big is it? And you, you became president of it. And yeah, so I was president in uh, 15 years ago, I think. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a small society because France is a small country. Mm -hmm. um, but we are, we are about 500 vascular mm -hmm. surgeons in France. And, it, and vascular surgery was a specialty recognized uh, about 15 years ago, which was uh, one, one of the first in mm -hmm. Europe to be, and in the world, in fact, to be recognized as a surgical specialty. Vascular surgery was uh, created by people that were coming from cardiac surgery and general surgery, and uh, quit doing cardiac or general, and only did vascular. So we are from Dubost on one side, and Cormier on the other. Cormier was doing general surgery, and Dubost coming from cardiac surgery, and among this group of people come uh, the second generation with Kiefer, et cetera, et cetera. So um, it's doing well. I mean, we have a training. We have a, to be a vascular surgeon in France, we have a, you have a five, year, a four, five years re a residency plus two years of fellowship. Mm -hmm. We don't call it a fellowship. It's sort of chief resident, but you only do a vascular surgery. So the people are well trained. The caveat is perhaps that they 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 do very they know how to operate, mm -hmm. but they don't read enough. They don't publish enough. You know this part of um, uh, understanding what is published is uh, is still missing. Uh, well, we we try to change this, but it's very difficult. We um, we get on endovascular very quickly. Because in fact, the, the cardiologists in France were not very powerful. 
and the interventional radiologists were very few. So on the, big, on the beginning, they tried to, to get the end of this patient, but we, we, we recognized very quickly that if we uh, don't do it by ourselves, we are just dead. So we just uh, fight, but we win very quickly. Because, you know, we were on call, we had the patient, we were aggressive, and, uh, and so we, 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 we did endovascular very well, very quickly, stand graft, very quickly, etc., etc. And now Stéphane Hollon, like uh, Greenberg, you know, uh, mm -hmm. doing branch, etc. And uh, in many, many, many uh, teaching institutions, it's well done. Um, the practice is 60% are in private, 40% are in uh, university hospital, public hospital, but private is uh, not like in the States. I mean, private, you are reimbursed by the social security 100%. Mm. So it's covered, mm -hmm. you know, so it's, uh, you, you have a fee and you apply the fee, I mean, you know. And they all come from the university hospital, you know, they are trained, so we know each other very well. And I think the, the quality of vascular surgery is, um, obviously, is quite good. You, you, you have seen by the, the trial that we published, by the Bateman trial on stand graft, mm -hmm. compared to open surgery, uh, the study that, uh, that we did on carotid versus CAS, that the result of... Very important study. Yeah, yeah. The, the result of, uh, of the surgery, open surgery, was very good. Right. So uh, I think the, the organization is uh, adequate. Um, Does the uh, the French uh, Vascular Surgery Society uh, have an annual meeting with yeah. scientific papers? Yeah, yeah. yeah. we have and an that, annual meeting we'll with uh, abstract selection, blind yeah. abstract selection. And where, and where do you publish those papers? Well, we um, it's a it's a sort of uh, difficulty. Mm. We um, obviously the best paper go to the Journal of Vascular Surgery or to the, to the European Journal of Vascular and Vascular Surgery. Yeah. Uh, and officially, because of Kikifer, I mean, the, the journal, the official journal are the Annals of Vascular Surgery. But the Annals of Vascular Surgery is a second level journal. You know, it's uh, in the United States when it doesn't go to the GVS, you go to the Annals. So, and, uh, so I think now the French people are willing not to do this anymore and sending the paper to the European Journal more or to the GVS. You know, it depends. Mm -hmm. Some, sometimes you, you choose one, sometimes you choose the other because they, they think the two journals are comparable. And now you have a major editorial responsibility. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. How's that going? Well, it's a lot of job. Awful job, never ending. <laughs> no weekend, no night. You know, you have always when you open your computer, you have always a paper. You are now the president. Yeah. What's your agenda for your society? What are you going to do? What, what, what new thing are you going to implement? Well, I think that we, we need to um, restructure the society to have more, uh, more, a better communication with the industry and uh, we have to, in, to uh, be more active in the uh, eastern country. You know, the main difference between the United States, the United States is one country. So the SVS now has antenna in the world, but the major, the main uh, surgeon are coming from USA mm -hmm. and Canada a little. Mm -hmm. But USA is a country. You, all of them, all, all of you speak English. Mm -hmm. You have more or less the same education, the same training. Your your fellowship are, you know, are, are organized in the same way. In Europe, when you go from Croatia to France, mm -hmm. it's a different world. Yeah. So this is what th this is interesting. Yeah. Yeah, but you know it is interesting. But there are many problems. Problem of uh, 
uh, education, problem of security, pro problem of uh, um, now problem of Islamism, you know, and uh, and with some country like Romania, are you know it's worse than China. You know. So we we have to take care of all these things. We don't have uh, vascular surgeon in Romania don't don't pay the same thing that uh, vascular surgeon in France because they have a very little money. Mm -hmm. So we, we have to be very careful with the education, the training. We have to tailor the training according to uh, where they are. So it's 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 a very difficult process. But I think that we uh, and you know. Germany, France, UK are completely different. Mm. In a way, they are organized. France is vascular surgery is a specialty. In uh, Germany, most of the vascular surgeons are doing cardiac surgery at the same time, mm. or general surgery, and uh, or you know, few. There are one f more than two thousand vascular surgeons in Germany. But when you ask who is really doing only vascular surgery, there are very few. So uh, it's to and UK is different. UK uh, try to dominate Europe, you know, because they speak English. Mm -hmm. But and they give a lesson to everybody. But when you look at the healthcare system, until recently it was a disaster. You wait uh, eight months to have an aortic aneurysm fixed uh, for hip surgery you wait two years yeah. so all these people all, all the many of them come to France <laughs> because the channel they come to France but they make they they are the you know they are the king of Europe mm -hmm. when you speak of uh, publication etc etc so uh, it's a uh, it's a little tension and uh, and running the European society is not easy because there are many pieces so we, we I will try to make this more running in the same direction first. Have a better relation with the industry because we we need some uh, some funds. And um, I had been some years ago the, the treasurer of European Society. When I was a treasurer, I gave a lot of money for grants. Mm. And by example, Stefan Hollande could come to with Greenberg because we give him a huge grant. Because we, we thought it was worthwhile and we and we were right. So uh, I think we have to push to have some grants to uh, send to be able to send people to the United States hmm. to make exchange. As editor of a journal I have uh, we we edit uh, controversies, you know transatlantic controversies in both journals, in the GVS and in the EGVS at the same time. One is from the United States and one is uh, from, uh, uh, from Europe. And this is very interesting. We, are, we, we should um, be more linked. We have, uh, I had a meeting uh, this morning with the editors of the GVS. I mean, we have very good r relations. Of course, there is a competition between the journals, but it's not a problem. I mean, uh, there are room for two journals, I think. And, uh, but we, we are, in some way, we are much more, I think, I, it's difficult to say, but we are much more close to the United States than sometimes to the British. You know, we, we think more, and French particularly. You know, the American in France, uh, the French, they remember that uh, during World War Two, I mean, uh, you save a country, you know, and you save Europe. In some way, you save the world too. But you know, you you come to uh, Normandy, and uh, when you visit this place, there are you know graves for right. kilometers yeah. of you yeah. know GIs. But yeah, the ties between, the right between the United States and France are very strong. Yeah, yeah, they are. yeah and. Uh, we, we fight each other all the time, mm -hmm. but uh, in fact we, you know, we have no, we have still some problem with German. Mm -hmm. 
because you know concentration camps is something like yeah. difficult mm -hmm. to swallow, and uh, even if it's not the same people now, it, mm -hmm. it's uh, Germany is a very good, nice country, and the German are okay. But I mean, with Americans it's different. Mm -hmm. I mean, they uh, they are they are friends. We, we, you, you can live with, with an American. Uh, could be some sometimes they're difficult, but I mean there is a real good, very good relation. Uh, the economy in Europe seems to be uh, having some trouble. Uh, Does that affect uh, yeah. your but the, Yeah, well, you know, the problem is that uh, Germany make all the effort, and the other country were just waiting. The euro, <coughs> when the euro was created, one euro was one Dutch mark. This is a sign, you know. In fact, the euro is a Dutch mark. And everybody goes behind. Because the machine in Europe is Germany. They produce car, they produce industry, uh, chemistry. Uh, you know, they are very aggressive. And they, and they are very careful to the economy. In France, you know, we have a huge deficit. And, uh, and we don't produce too, too much. I mean, uh, well, when I was young, when you were going to South, to Africa, there were a lot of Peugeot, the Peugeot, you know, mm -hmm. the car, French mm -hmm. car. Mm -hmm. Now it's Toyota. Yeah. Peugeot is, you know. So it's, uh, but you see a lot of Audi. When you go to China, there are only Audi. Audi, Mercedes. Yeah, BMW. Uh, more, more, more Audi, and you know, there are mm -hmm. plenty of, so we we uh, we should be very careful with Germany because if Germany say well we quit Europe, there will be the Germany with two or three people from the east of Europe, you know, that work with Germany, and the rest will be France, Italy, Spain, nice place to for holidays, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, uh, yeah, but. <laughs> Yeah. So now, the end of vascular surgery mm -hmm. by Kiefer and Raymond, they are more oriented to French. Is that affect your journal? Yeah, but right. you know, uh, Ramon yeah. is no more the editor. He's gone. Mm -hmm. Kiefer is gone. I mean, he's uh, sick and dying, so he's no more mm -hmm. taking care of anything. Now it's Goyo Brissonnière. And uh, I don't know the name of a guy in the United States who runs the... Tim, Tim Sullivan. T Tim Sullivan oh, is yeah. running the Annals. Yeah, he's a new editor. Oh, yeah. yeah, he's running the Annals. But the, uh, when you read the Annals, it's most, most of the time it's only a uh, case report. Very few series. So, you know, it's, uh, it's not very interesting for the, for the French people or for the European people to publish in Vienna. So it's better to try to publish in the European Journal, the European or to the GVS, because the rejection rate of both journals is the same, it's 60%. It's about the same, mm -hmm. 60, 62, you know, so it's... Uh, tell us about the, uh, you're, you, you're pretty busy with your administrative roles and leadership roles, but tell us about the clinical surgery that you're doing. Well, I am. Uh, I'm, I'm still active. Mm -hmm. uh, I I do surgery uh, four or three days a week, mm -hmm. and clinics one day. Uh, I do mainly carotid surgery, aortic surgery, open surgery. Mm -hmm. I leave uh, endovascular surgery to a young guy. Well, I help them, but I'm not too much interested into this because I want that the young people still know to do a carotid mm -hmm. and uh, still know to do an uh, open, open approach to the aorta and a thoracoabdominal aneurysm and uh, uh, retroperitoneal approach. And I think it is, uh, I think it is very important because um, there is still very, a lot of indication for open surgery. You've written a number of papers on carotid patching. Mm -hmm. What, what sort of things do you do? Do you do, you do some bypasses for carotid uh, yeah. occlusive disease? We, 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 we do some bypass. We do some bypass when you have extensive lesion in the internal carotid, when you have uh, radiation therapy, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, redo sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can do that.
sometimes you can't, so mm -hmm. we do a, we put a PTFE and it works well. We have a good follow up of mm -hmm. more two hundred cases and uh, the occlusion rate is very low. No more than two or three percent. So it's a, it's a good I think it's working well. We we don't use a vein. Cormier was using the Safinus vein for the carotid. And uh, we think it's dangerous because it can close if you have a, a too small vein, a vein with fibrosis, you know. So we, we put a PTFE. So you're using six millimeter PTFE yeah. for the bypass. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Interesting, because we don't do that too much in the United yeah, I know, States. I know. Yeah, it's a, it's a different philosophy. But we, we don't do it very often, okay? Oh, yeah. we, uh, the, we do the same thing that you do for carotid surgery. We do uh, carotidotomy and bypass. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and carotidotomy and bypass in, in elective case, mm -hmm. rare. Are you doing open type 4 thoracoabdominal aneurysms or are you doing many of those with endo now? Well, if a patient is a, a good risk, has good risk factors, young, we do open. Mm -hmm. If the patient is, uh, you know, old and tired, we try to do a uh, branched. And we do it with uh, Stefano, but we do it in our institution, but we ask him to come. Mm -hmm. uh, we have done a, a 15 now, and, uh, but it sometimes it's very difficult. Mm -hmm. So we, we prefer to have uh, somebody who knows this very well. So. Mm -hmm. And we're doing very few open uh, thoracoabdominal aneurysms in the last few years because you can always figure out a way to do them endo. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. It's a bit of a dying art. Yeah. What about uh, tibial disease, John? Are you doing uh, lower extremity endo with small balloons and uh, oh, yeah. all that? The chief resident loves this. They uh -huh. put balloons everywhere. And, uh, <laughs> but when the patient has uh, a critical limb ischemia and a good vein, we do a bypass. Uh -huh. And uh, I think it's... Uh, yeah, they work very well. Yeah. Yes, they work very well. How's the family? Tell us about well, my wife is uh, keep, keeping the house on the road. <laughs> um, I have three kids. E Etienne uh, was in Chicago with Emmanuel, the girl in the middle. Uh, he's uh, in Vietnam, he goes to Vietnam. Finally, he thought it was an interesting country and he, he's there since eight years. He's, uh, he's doing uh, some marketing, some uh, commercial job. Uh -huh. It's not uh, very successful, but uh, he has got enough to live and, uh, you know, he loves us. And uh, he has, uh, he's very active, he's uh, doing a lot of sports uh, and, uh, and working too. Emmanuel was a graduate from Northwestern in uh, law. Uh -huh. uh, was uh, hired by uh, Baker and McKenzie in Chicago and go back to Milan because she speaks fluent Italian. So she goes to Milan, she was hired and then she was fired from uh, because the, of the economy was terrible. And now she uh, uh, she is working since two days, I think, in a new company, a medical company in the, in the law department of a medical company. In Milan? In Milan, oh, yeah. which is a very nice town. And um, Charles, a uh, small one, was uh, also uh, in uh, Vietnam because he was, uh, he was graduate from a uh, hospitality school in, uh, in Switzerland called De Lausanne. The hotel. Yeah. Ecole hotel. A very famous one. Ooh, famous he was hired one. by the IAT in, uh, in Atlanta for uh -huh. two years. And then there was, you know, it was a period the economy was very bad in the States, so they fired all the foreigners. So he came back to Europe and uh, he don't like very much. And now he works for, a, in Vietnam for a company that do the movie and uh, works for Microsoft. But uh, he will come back to Europe and uh, I think he will try to find a new job. You know, young people have, it's tough for them. Even if they have, uh, you know, they have to find a way, their, their way, it's not very easy. It is tough for them, yeah. So we have to keep the home open, you know, it's like your hotel. Mm -hmm. They have to, co they come back sometimes. That's right. Because they, you know, they have nothing to rejuvenate. left. rejuvenate. Yeah. <laughs> they, 
Yeah. Breath a little and start again. Uh -huh. That's right. John, thank you very much for That's a pleasure. coming and talking to us. John, I just want to let you know, we are very proud of you. Thank you, sir. You <laughs> are our fellow became a president of European SBS. That's a wonderful a accomplishment. Congratulations. <laughs> well, it was a fight in some way. Not so easy. Yeah. Not so easy. But, you know. Worth it. Well, when you work for a society, I mean, uh, people recognize it. And uh, there was a vote. Mm -hmm. It was not a Mickey Mouse story, you know, it was a vote, and uh, they vote. And, and uh, thanks for coming. Thank you.